Hi everybody, I'm Dana Durford, also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org, and you can find my videos and Fukushima presentations live throughout the entire internet. It is December the 3rd, 2015, and we are looking forward to this stream. My audio is really full. Get this up. Okay. Alright, that's what I wanted. <laughs> it's a little intro for a change. I jammed this one together the last night after the hey, rocket and mood. I taught him everything he knows, everything he knows, sorry. <laughs> Looks like we're streaming. Looks really good. Hi everybody. <laughs> One more round before it ends. I'll turn off the Adobe on this end so we got lots of bandwidth being used. And hopefully we can get some of the kinks out of this system. Who knows, you know, it be our lucky day, right? Oh, there we go. Let's get that little guy back in the corner where he belongs. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, ooh. So we finally got most of the kinks worked out of this, I would hope. And hopefully the audio is really good. Hi, everybody. Everybody's very good. Dana, Dana, I'm here. Hi, Albert, Mickey. So it takes us a few minutes to get the stream up and running if anybody's not familiar with these streams. And what we have to do is we have to learn how to use livestream.com uh, properly. And so because I'm not used to t with the headphones on listening to the music, I wasn't able to go out with my normal intro, and that's okay too. But you'll catch the live stream six days a week, probably seven days a week, but blah, blah, blah. And it's just, it's very difficult to do what I'm doing and get up and actually make this work all the time and come up with the data and still do the things that I do. So I'm Dana Durver, nuclearproctologist.org, and 10.30 a.m. Pacific Canada time. Uh, never early, usually late at this stage by a few minutes before we get the streams working properly. And if you go to livestream.com and you type in Dana Durnford, you'll see that picture. When you type it in, my name will show up all of a sudden with that picture, and you'll know you found my site. And I hope that helps uh, anybody out there that's trying to find my site. Um, audio's great, Amter says. Hi, everybody. Patrick, Bob, Rattleshark, and Alex. And so I'm just stalling for a few seconds before I get into the show. Daniel, Mickey, Duke. And so we got, uh, we got uh, the laptop imported. And you can see I killed the Adobe to save on the bandwidth. Hi, Laurie. Illusion is over. Divine rights. I'm sure I missed a dozen people, but we just started the stream. So really good stuff. And so we are here to talk about Fukushima. And the absurdity of Fukushima, you can see Russia offers to help Japan shut down Fukushima reactors. But if you scroll to the bottom of it, it says Fukushima disaster is considered the second worst nuclear accident after Chernobyl. Well, let's go talk about that for a few seconds so people can understand the basic things about Chernobyl. That'll, and so it took a long time to gather up this kind of information, unfortunately. And I got a, it's a stupid amount of work to do what I do. But we enjoy it and we try our best. This is about Fukushima. Fukushima had a 9.0 earthquake. Allegedly, it was 9.3 originally. And the magnitudes of these earthquakes between 8 and 9 and 7 and 8 are extraordinary. Some say 10, some say 100. Some say, say you can't really measure it accurately because it's over such a large area. And that, you know, a road breaking could be devastating for a family, but that's not going to register in time to give them any kind of a warning that that's going to happen on a highway, obviously, or to, to their house or to their or to a kindergarten school or something, or high school, or college, or institution, or a mall. And so the whole country shook for six minutes. Think about that. Six minutes. So for six minutes, this thing was shaking like you can't even imagine. 
And it was a thousand times worse than Haiti. Think about that one. And that... And there was many, 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 many aftershocks that day. And I'm making this video today in particular because we're having... It's hard to understand Japan without a really good foundation for a lot of people. But if you're watching streams like this, you'll be surprised what you can pick up in a short order. And you don't need to be a genius to work this out. And that's why we exist in the capacity of what we're doing here. Let me get rid of that. Extra guy. He's not supposed to be there. Who knows anymore? And oh, I know what I got done. Uh, Dana, sorry, folks. So let's keep going on the reactors. We'll get to them at some point, I'm sure. Here we go. So after the earthquake that shook the country for six minutes, traveling at 9,000 miles per hour, hit Florida 30 minutes later, 50 minutes or so later, a tsunami turned the country into a wood chipper. Into a wood chipper. And now that's going to the nuclear power plants is the pictures you're looking at. Now if you don't understand what a wood chipper means in the context of what I'm saying, strap yourselves in and have a look at this. This was hundreds of miles of the coastline. All the infrastructure is gone, the telephone poles are gone, the ability to move around is gone, and people are helpless and destitute, and a lot of people died, right? So that tsunami comes through the, that whole coastline. It wasn't just Fukushima, what you're looking at right now. So what you're looking at right now is there's no way that that already wipes out the generators, that already wiped out the diesel tanks that to run the generators, that wiped out the connections of the generator. That wiped out the infrastructure of the nuclear power plant itself. Okay. All right. Because by the time it receded, it looked like that everywhere, including right where you were looking at time. Okay. Well, now, over the next couple of days, it started detonations. There was 14 power plants... There was 14 nuclear power plants that couldn't go into cold shutdown. Yeah, 14. 14 of those power plants along that coastline. Now, the Diney plant was about 10 miles away. But let's go back and break down this so you can understand it. So after the detonations, what you have is four plants really close to each other. And to your left is where behind number four, which is at the very um, bottom of your screen here, at the just behind that is where they had a common spent storage pool. So behind those wrecked buildings, a couple of hundred feet away, right? Do you get that yet? Is about nine million pounds of spent fuel rods. Now, they don't produce, their biggest producer is not cesium, even though it's a stupid amount of that stuff. Their biggest producer is not strontium-90, even though there's 100 times more strontium-90 than there is cesium. And cesium has many daughters, and so does strontium. And so these elements that are created are elements that only exist because of 100% of man-made electrons from a neutron bombardment, those particular types of elements we're talking about right now. But, but we can irradiate, ionize uh, normal elements by bomb burning and with neutrons too. But what we're talking about is stuff that was, you know, like 400 tons to get a gram. Right? Is what they shift through to get a gram of this stuff, basically. But a gram of it is a million watts. A gram of it, um, if it's atomized in the aerosol, it's enough to give every human and every creature on the planet a cancer. A gram of it. Just a gram. Not a meltdown, not a reactor. Just a gram of that stuff. Distribute it out one atom at a time. Because that's all it takes. Now, that's not going to show up for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 years. But before that shows up, there's 1,800 autoimmune deficiencies. Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, diabetes, 
respiratory, lung, liver, heart problems, major problems, heart attack, strokes, in any kind of quantity at all. Any of this stuff, when it gets in your body, it doesn't act, it acts like potassium, it acts like calcium. So your body uptakes it and the sequester is in your body. Then your body attacks it, even though it's a single atom. Your body will attack that relentlessly for 30 years till it turns into a tumor and you're diagnosed. And that's what I mean by it takes 30 years to show up as a cancer. But it's, but it's, it's displacing the oxygen molecules in your blood the entire time with white blood cells because it has to attack that. That's just an atom. That's just one atom. One of these hot particles. One of these ionized, radiated, man-made elements. These are man-made. These are not created by the sun. They're not in your periodic tables until we put them there with the same name with an extra atomic weight to it because it accepted neutrons as electrons. And so that's why we have terrorist laws, that's why we have nuclear waste sites, nuclear waste repositories don't work because if you have an accident you can't get inside the waste repository anymore because it's contaminated. Okay, so a gram of stuff is very very dangerous, it's a million watts Imagine a 3,000 watt heater in your bathroom, turn it on, bust. Now imagine 333 of those and that your power source is a gram. It's the size of a dime. So stuff is very dangerous for very long periods of time at very low quantities. Quantities beyond the human perception, beyond our senses, beyond our ability to reason with it, beyond our comprehensions at the atomic scale. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is that if I can ever get it to come up, is that these reactors what they describe as a meltdown. Okay, okay Dana, meltdown. <laughs> Big deal, Dana. I melted down ice all the time, Dana. Okay, it's not like that. Yeah, Dana, it's like, it's the kind of stuff that would melt your glaciers, like it happened in Canada recently, but it's not reported on in the media. And so Canada now has no glaciers on the coastline of British Columbia, Canada, where it took a thousand years to create that kind of ice. So it would take a thousand years to create it again. We might get snow up there this winter, and we did a little bit up there, but normally, throughout millenniums, throughout the history, there's been snow pack in our glacier. And that would regulate the temperatures in the estuaries and lakes and rivers all the way down to the coastline. It's part of the ecosystem itself. And that is gone. That was because of tritium in our drinking water. Okay, but let me explain what I mean by meltdown, okay? And it's just really straightforward. You don't have to know much about this to really appreciate the, what I'm telling you and, and, the, and the significance of what I'm telling you and be able to understand and comprehend it and have a conversation about it and sound lucid, hopefully. Chernobyl was the world's worst environmental disaster. 20 years on, John Vidal reports on the cleanup. 20 years on, so this is April the 26th, 2006. So this is pre-Fukushima. Okay, here we go. So if you look at the third sentence, and for the next 10 days, the equivalents of 400 Hiroshima bombs worth of radioactivity across 150,000 square miles of Europe and beyond. Well, what that 400 Hiroshima bombs means is hell on earth. That's why he says those words, hell on earth. Now he's not saying hell on earth for something to do. He's saying that because of 400 Hiroshima bombs. So 400 Hiroshima bombs. Um, so if Chernobyl had lasted 40 days instead of 10 days, then it would have surpassed all the bomb testing, yeah? Okay, well let's just say if Chernobyl had lasted 100 days, it would have surpassed all the bomb testing. Oh, oh, no, okay. Let's say if Chernobyl had 400 Hiroshima bombs a day, every day for 10 days, For a hundred days, now it's surpassed it. All the bomb testing, yeah? 
Okay, what about if Chernobyl lasted all the way up to today? What if that happened? Then what would it be equal to at 400 Hiroshima bombs every 10 days? But yet just after 10 days was considered hell on earth. Are we on the same page? Okay, let's go. Now Chernobyl. Oh, Chernobyl. Yeah, Chernobyl. Oh, Ch Chernobyl. No, no Chernobyl, Dana. Don't talk Chernobyl. Uh, Chernobyl, much worse. You seen what the Russia Today, Russia TV said? I showed you that headline a little bit earlier. Where he said, Chernobyl, after 10 days, it stopped, oh, mind you. Thank goodness. But because of 10 days, it's worse than Fukushima. But Fukushima didn't stop. I know. And, but I'm going to show you what the buildings look like so you can make up your own mind. How about that? There's a novel idea. And at the same time, I'll, I'll give you a comparison. Well, just do it, Dana. Just, just do it. All right, I'm going to do it. Here I'm doing it. Uh, uh. Okay, so this is Unit 1. Unit 1. And Unit 1 was... Let me hope I get this one right. Unit 1 was 100% meltdown. Reactor 2 was 100% meltdown. Reactor 3 was 100% meltdown. And Reactor 4 is 100% meltdown. Now I'm going to explain that to you. Coming up. But I want to give you some kind of context, right? You know, you got to get rid of stuff like that off the screen. Dana, stop that. Dana, what have I got done? Dana, nobody knows. Dana. But hey, it's okay. So this is Unit 1. Are you digging that? That's 100% meltdown. That's Unit 2. 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. This is Unit 3. If I got to explain that one to you, I probably can't help you. But that, just in case, that's a 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. Now, in comparison, just that one alone, in comparison to Chernobyl, Chernobyl becomes a candlestick. But wait a second, Chernobyl was hell on earth in 2006 because of 400 Hiroshima bombs over 10 days. These creatures that you're looking at are three times the size. Well, they were. Chernobyl. And let's go back to Chernobyl for one second. I'll show you Unit 4. There's Unit 4. And... Now, Unit 4, just bear with me. So you've seen Unit 1, Unit 2, Unit 3, Unit 4. Okay, well, Unit 4 is an enigma that we're going to talk about after this. So Chernobyl lasted 10 days. Fukushima never stopped. Hang on, i got to move something. Stupid. Can't read anything. <sighs> I got it. Chernobyl lasted 10 days, sorry. Fukushima never stopped. Chernobyl was one third the size of any of the reactors at Chernobyl. Fukushima has four full meltdowns. Think, think about four full meltdowns. Think about four of these. Chernobyl was only a 30% meltdown. Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. And Chernobyl was one third the size. Now Chernobyl there was over a million confirmed deaths, and Kafiana said over three million children had permanent disabilities because of Chernobyl in Ukraine. Three million children. That's two thousand two United Nations. Chernobyl, you still can't eat the meat or drink the milk or sell the land in, in a lot of UK, Ireland, and Scotland. And European countries, not just those countries, but because they're so far removed. I hope by saying that, that you're able to understand how far this actually traveled. Okay. This, but this was only 10 days, hell on earth. Yeah? Okay. But Russia today says that Chernobyl was the worst accident, not Fukushima with four meltdowns. 
Now, that's hard for people because they don't not, they don't see the pictures in context. They don't have someone explain all these little, you know, not little, but these incredible differences. They say nobody died at Fukushima, but yet seven people died in one street. Yet 5,000 employees right away were, had huge counts, 10,000 counts per minute, dead people walking. Yet Harvard, Yale, Stanford, Oxford, nobody went in there, but everybody went to Chernobyl, but nobody went to Fukushima. Everybody went to Chernobyl for 26 years, 28 years, right from the get-go. But think about Chernobyl, you still can't, it was only, I'm sorry, two years ago they started selling, they started fishing again in Sweden, in the fresh lakes, after 26 year ban because of the fallout from 10 days of Chernobyl. But, what about Fukushima? Is that the people that are, not that many people, just corporate personhood, corporations, they're not real people, the people that represent them are, but they can't go to jail. Google can't go to jail. Walmart can't go to get jail. Um, Bill Gates can't go to jail in the context of they can only pay a fine. They can't get a criminal record though. And so that's what we're up against. This is corporate personhood has invaded the nuclear industry. Nuclear industry gets up on the stock exchange and now they're corporate personhood. And they like to play rough. All right. Now, Chernobyl was using, I'm sorry, they abandoned those areas. Hi, Dana Durnford. We're, I'm live streaming. I live stream every morning, 10.30 a.m. and 11.30 p.m. I'll call, I'll, call, I'll call you back after. Okay, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, best of. Bye-bye. And, and so Chernobyl abandoned the homes and they, 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 they destroyed the homes. And in Fukushima, you get free homes if you're pregnant in the contaminated zones. In Chernobyl, it's graphite fuel. In Fukushima, it's MOX. MOX is two million times worse than current reactors, than a current, any reactor at 440 on the planet. Mox is two million times worse. Okay. Mox is confirmed. Mox is confirmed to be in and number three. And what did number three look like, Dina? Well, number three looks like that. It's the destroyed building. The building alongside of is number four. And the building alongside that is number two, but all of it is missing out of two. That's confirmed about three weeks ago. Finally. Because this is a huge issue. They've been denying this for years and they're still in denial. And that the climate talks in Paris are about everybody saying this stuff is harmless. This stuff is climate perfect. This stuff is innocuous. That this stuff is carbon free. And by proxy then they can have nuclear power plants to mitigate what they call climate change. Yeah, That's the game that you're trying to play. I gotta watch what I'm doing here. That's a bit of a problem what I got done there. I'll get rid of that. So, Chernobyl contaminated EU, the European countries, like I was explaining to you earlier. Fukushima killed the entire Pacific Ocean. Okay. Dina, what are you talking about, Dina? Okay, strap yourselves in. The most important video you'll probably ever watch because of the source and the data that we're supplying for you are impeccable. They're untouchable. Okay, let's go into the big pretty pictures again. Hell on Earth, Chernobyl, 10 days, third sentence from the top, 400 Hiroshima bombs. Now, what you're looking at now is what I done along the coastline with the hounds of Fukushima. And what we done was we took a Coast Guard Zodiac 24 feet long, and everything you see there, we put there. Everything on that boat, we put it on that boat. We created the cabin, everything, and we done 260 miles of the coastline. And what we looked at was the tidal pools. These are what the normal tidal pools throughout the entire coastline of British Columbia would look like. 
And once you go ashore, right at the shoreline, at the low tide line, it will look like that. And I see I got a bit of a problem with my pictures. It's okay. This only takes a second. Now, those two pictures are from this spot here that we went and covered. And now the shoreline looks like that. So we had a coastline that was unbelievable. we had done 15,000 miles of it. All the arrows you see are places where we lingered for days and weeks. We hit the tidal pools. There's 200,000 pictures up at the nuclear proctologist. And then most of them will look exactly like that. None of them will look like that. And you can't find it either. It's gone. That is a directly because that coastline is kept warm all year long by the warm waters from Japan. So it's a direct route here. It's a direct route here. And so I didn't go in all the way with that picture that time. I got to let it go all the way in. <laughs> Dana, get your act together, Dana. You're making it hard sometimes, maybe, almost. Let's come over and make sure I'm actually streaming. Because things can get pretty crazy around here. So you got at the bottom of that Russia headline, the Fukushima disaster is considered the second worst after Chernobyl. Yeah, really? In what little tiny world do you live in? In what imaginary planet do you come from? Look at it. They're showing you Unit 4 after the detonation. And, and I'm going to show you more pictures about Unit 4. They tore all that off. All is good. Looks good. Hi, Starlight, Jamie Lee. Just cruising. Um, Danielle says good. Albert, Mickey, James. Okay, let's see. So it looks good on that end. Okay, let's keep going. Let's keep buzzing through this stuff. It's 10.57 a.m. And Russia offers, you need to look up that headline, Russia offers to help Japan shut down the reactors down well I prefer you try to go fix the Pacific Ocean at the same time come up with a solution for that one while you're at it because that's that's you can't stop what's happened to the ocean you can't change that let me just come back and touch up on some of that oh we lost the plot here this time oh yeah okay here's where we're doing <laughs> okay now that unit 4 they had there, I showed you that time. That's what that should look like. But they, remember, they tore everything down. They tore it all off. They built this structure with cranes. You won't see people ever cutting torches. Or with scaffolding. <laughs> okay. But anyway, these are homeless. They're all dead now. They're, they, there's Who knows how many of them were sacrificed. But I can guarantee you, nobody from Harvard, Yale, Stanford, Oxford, MIT got cancer from going to Fukushima because they didn't go to Fukushima. None of the NRC got cancer from Fukushima or went there because they didn't. They went to Tokyo. And, you know, that's that's in the emails, the millions of emails right at their site. It's all from Tokyo hotels. And they say, even though lots redacted, right, the official emails, there's a couple of million of them. Ah, you know, no big deal. It was just... Just a meltdown, Dana. Well, why was there a couple of million emails? Why was all the phone calls transcribed? Why was all this and all that if it was just nodding? It'd be like a banana. <laughs> yeah, you don't got an answer for that one. So, they tore the building apart, but yet, at the same time, they claim to look like that on the inside. At the same time, they claim they can't get inside of it. At the claim, same time, they show these are official pictures. These are official pictures. Here they are putting water into the pool, but that thing there, they had to fly in from another country long after it melted down. Because you couldn't drive it in. You couldn't drive it in because the country looked like that. Hello? Wake up. Dana the Earth. Um, and so the ceiling, look at the ceiling. Go take out this photographic memory from Dana for a second. Do that. Now, say, I know what the outside of that building looks like. It looks like that. That was 10 stories. And they all looked like that because they all melted down. They all melted down because the country looked like that. You couldn't get power in there in an hour and a half. If you can't get power in there in an hour and a half, it does that. And that. <laughs> and that. Yeah, yeah. 
Does that make kind of sense to you now? Can you wrap your mind around it now? Does anybody understand that now? No? Okay, let's keep going then. All over the country, they're picking that up. They're not picking it up because it's like a banana. No. They're not picking it up because it's like a potato chip. No. They're not picking it up because it's like walking in the sunshine. No. They're not picking it up because it's like getting on an airplane. No. They're picking it up because it has extra electrons added to it through a neutron bombardment. That's why Vidal called it hell on earth. Now, Chernobyl is far away from the ocean. Fukushima is right smack, smack dab on the ocean. Chernobyl is five, six hundred kilometers from the ocean. At least, in either direction. Yeah, the rivers is carrying it down. I don't think it's not. That's why Woods Hole and all the uh, Harvard and Yale and Stanford and Oxford and all of them were down there for 26 years studying the ocean down there. Now we got the nuclear lapdogs are just two of them for North America. Okay, so the ocean current at five miles per hour travels faster than that. Faster than that. It'll, that's how we warm, keep the warm waters on the Canadian coastline. Right, it mingles with the Alaska water. But the rain picks it up. And that there's so much of it can constantly coming out of there and so much of it being flushed. Flushed. It's being flushed out of there. Flushed. That's what these things are doing. They're pouring water down and they're trying to, they got wells on the site. They're trying to suck water up that they can find. But the majority of it washes back out into, you know, the Pacific Ocean. So this model is only based up on how many days? Just a couple of days releases over six years. Now imagine if the stuff I'm talking about all the rain and the snow that was washing all of this stuff throughout the mountains and the countries out to the river forever. Think about that reactor, how many times that is of a Chernobyl. But, right? Think about the difference of that in Chernobyl is astronomical. Think about the fact that they had full fuel pools, full pools if you want to call them that, on the roof. That they're gone. That they atomized and aerosoled and detonated. That's unit three. That's it there from another view, just after the detonations. And so the fuel pools are where they put the reactors, yeah? The fuel pools are where they took the reactor core, and the reactors can take 3,450 assemblies. I can't remember the exact number. Each assembly is around 80 rods. Each rod is around 18 pounds and 12 feet long. And then a pound of it will be brought into a theater with 1,500 people. It kills everybody in 20 minutes. If you can drop the floor and have them all fall out, and then the floor come back up, and another 1,500 ran into the room, you can exterminate the entire planet with that one pound. And then you can exterminate all the animals with that one pound. And that one pound would still be there a billion years after everything was killed. Now these reactors had more than a pound, and that a gram of it produces more atoms than every grain of sand on every beach on all the, pla all the planets, on this planet. Wrap your mind around that one. 10 to the power of 20. Time, divide grams in the five million, uh, 9 million pounds in the common spent storage that was on the ground when the tsunami ran through the site. These buildings detonated. Think about the tsunami ran through that site. The thing about the tsunami logged that stuff throughout the country. And we know it logged it throughout the country because they're doing this throughout the country. And that Fukushima Prefecture alone has over 10,000 of these spots. 10,000. Right? I played those clips before. Okay. And so we went throughout the Canadian coastline. Right? Um, in the Zodiac. For 260 days, 15,000 miles, we have an extinction event playing out on the coastline. Okay. Let me come back over to the next stage of this conversation. The missing species are phytoplankton. These are the bases of the food chain, the bases of the oxygen chain, the bases of the carbon sequestering chain. These produce 50% of the oxygen on the planet. Phytoplankton is normally categorized for a lot of people just as... Uh, plants. That's a mistake. 
Phytoplankton includes the larvae of everything below it and the rockfish and the shellfish too. Not all of those, but say an oyster does. And an oyster will have up to 11 million eggs. And in their original states, they're considered phytoplankton. They travel with the currents. They have no locomotion. Now, ph phytoplankton is the most important thing in this whole equation originally because that's the basis of the food chain itself. If you take that one out, everything else will fail, and it did. Now, the phytoplankton we know doesn't exist because we've done the whole coastline. Now, we've done the whole coastline um, in this zodiac. Now, there's another zodiac that's with that on the roof. It's not there in that picture, but... And it has an 8 horsepower on it. And we use that to go to all the islands and go into the beaches and to look for the species that we know are there. There's supposed to be 5,600 species there. But what turned out, in the same spot, there's nothing left. And But this picture is emblematic of the entire coastline. Those pictures are emblematic of no matter where you went on the coastline. But they are from the same spot. They, they are authentic. And, and it's all gone. And what that means is that the 4 million other species didn't receive the coastline. And what that means is we have an extinction event. That isn't an extinction event. And so, once again, some people have a hard time wrapping their mind around that. And so i got solutions for you for that. Urchins could be the next victims of sea star wasting disease. That was the Smithsonian. They used a National Geographic report that the urchins die off have been observed and documented at four sites along the 200 miles of coastline in America. Uh, and so a fifth site off Baja, California. And based upon that input, they declared a mass mortality for the sea urchins also. Now, so what we done was, we done the whole coastline, yeah? And we documented it up at the nuclearproctologist.org. And so I've had nine computers killed. I've been arrested. I've been uh, humiliated. I've been uh, demonized and vilified repeatedly in the last three weeks. I was arrested uh, for criminal harassment, but I'm arrested for calling the people who say there's no radioactive fallout and that Chernobyl is worse and et cetera, et cetera. Everything that I advocate against here today, the people who advocate everything I advocate against are the people who went ahead and had me silenced and had 300 of my presentations removed. And Dad, how did I become the bad guy for doing what I'm doing with the Hounds of Fukushima? This is a perplexing question I would hope for you. And that, if not me, then who should tell you this stuff? Because we cannot find that person. And so we have no options but to come out and hope that you are reasonable and would look at this information and would assess it for what it is and, and, and understand the enormity and the stress involved in doing what I do and that the target that I have become, and that in court documents over the last couple of weeks, the disclosures have shown that Woods Hole and UVic used the Canadian RCMP, uh, in particular uh, Steve Crux of Sandy's Police Department, in tandem with the FBI to put me on terrorist watch list and censor me, but also used it to, to uh, create a team of people to vilify me and uh, mobilized the nuclear industry against me and that my narrative, because it couldn't be, there was no leaks or breaks in my narrative, then the only option left was to vilify me and demonize me and smear me through the media. But I'm back. Hey, I don't care. Whatever. Stick it to me all you want. See if I'm going to lose any sleep over that one. Guess again. The krill. The krill are crustaceans. They're like shrimp. They can live up to 10 years. They are the diet of the oclets, the mass die-offs we see. They starve to death because they couldn't find the krill, nor could they find the anchovies or the sardines and the squid or the herring or the salmon. But the krill is the basis of the conversion of the phytoplankton, the zooplankton, the pods, the microscopic world. And so phytoplankton, clicking away, phytoplankton, uh, we spent months on the coastline. Now, when the, the bloom of krill and phytoplankton comes to the coast, it's a very wide, hundreds of miles wide. And so your cameras underwater can't see the ocean floor. They can't even see the bottom of the boat. 
and it's something to revel in. Because with it would normally mean millions of birds, millions of creatures, mi millions of animals dependent upon a mass migration of krill, including the sardines and the anchovies and the squid and the herring and the salmon. But all the birds, the 169 uh, migratory and the 148 residential. And that number changes all the time because I, there is no known perfect number of what's here because it's such a vast coastline that we only recognize in, in the coastline in, in the tidal zones 5600 indigenous but Barkley Sound has an extra 1800 species on the other side of where I'm to right now but there is another 4 million species in the Pacific Ocean but when none of them sees the coastline it means the ocean was devastated when all of these industries you're looking at are confirmed fails three years in a row now after four and a half years of Fukushima and because they hit it and, and equated Chernobyl as much worse than what's happening, uh, it was not an accident. That was to minimize and not be able to point fingers at what was happening. Because then would, if people, if they were to admit that, like if RT admitted that Chernobyl was thousands of times, now when I've done that breakdown for you about the atomic bomb, 400 Hiroshima bombs, you have to put into the equation to spend fuel pools at Fukushima. These are reactor cores. The fuel pool can go into a chain reaction on its own. The cast at the holding sites can go into a chain reaction at their own. That's why they have uh, the system that they do. That's why they have the issues that they do. That's why no country on the planet can f find a repository for these things. That's why we have the terrorist laws. That's why we have the Space Non-Proliferation Agreement because we recognize that these isotopes are man-made and that they're not uh, on the periodic table that we know of throughout the solar system, that our particular solar system, and that we have modified the ones from our solar system on top of that, and that they, there is an ethic we don't understand, but we shouldn't be releasing that into space. But we do. We put out satellites with plutonium in it. And so we're betrayal to not only our planet, but through uh, the space to the universe itself by doing that. And people might think, you know, to me, it's the equivalent of passing out the blankets uh, with smallpox on it back in the day to, to resettle lands to get rid of population. Give them pretty blankets, come back in a couple of months, and most of them were dead. The rest were too weak to fight. And sending plutonium, the most lethal thing we know, and because the reactors in Japan had so much in those reactors. So let's keep going. Now you start talking sometimes. you got to watch it. We got a schedule, we got to stick to it. And so, but not that tight. Let's come over and say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm Dina. I hope you're there. And we're looking for you. We'll find you. Jamie, lead a Corbett report. James Corbett from the Corbett report has Fukushima updates. Is it? Yeah. And Fukushima update, uh, they pump out Woods Hole and UVic. And that here's the person who says there's no issue, yet has a site dedicated to it and works very hard to keep it up and running and supplied, but yet says there's no issue. And I can't res uh, resolve myself on that one, outside of the fact that he's obviously not who we, th we think he was or is. And that he has no moral compass, period. To have Fukushima update and maintain that constantly, put up all the nuclear pukes, Ian Goddard and people like that, Woods Hole, UVic, University of Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. The, the two apologists, both of these are from Woods Hole originally. Uh, so hi everybody, hi James, Bob. I don't like Core Report because he has, it's it's a switch off. He's got Fukushima updates where he tells everybody nothing's wrong, there's no issues, it's not going to hurt the ocean. That he pumps out Woods Hole and University of Victoria. What part about that is that you can't wrap your mind around? No offense, if you can't wrap your mind around it, you're probably in the wrong spot. Because I'm, I'm not going to allow anybody to pump out James Colbert on my site, period. I don't, I don't appreciate that. It's well known what my thoughts on that person is. And that he's a shyster and that he's killing his own. And that in the near future he'll be charged with murder. For murdering millions of people by coercing them with his videos that there was nothing wrong. Go ahead and eat the seafood. 
If you don't, if you can't understand where I'm coming from, if anybody out there can't wrap their mind around that statement after watching this video, what are you doing on my video? You know, because we have to deal with this. I ho and I'll start every show off, but I highly recommend you don't have nothing to do with James Colbert because of his site Fukushima update, because he pumps out the nuclear pock child and nuclear apologists only. Maybe that'll make everybody a little bit more clear. I'll make up a little video and I'll just play it at the beginning of each show from now on, I think. Because I'm getting kind of tired of seeing that show up. No offense to anybody that is talking about it. I'm just saying, don't do it on my site. Yeah? Yeah. But don't worry about it. I don't pander to people, okay? Let's get that straight. And But I, 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 I respect people. And... I make mistakes too. And I'm not making a mistake on this one. I flushed it out over and over. And that I don't hide away from anybody. And that I provide all the documentation and they never provided any of it. Not a single bit of it. They pumped out the nuclear apologists. Go to their site and look at it. There's nuclear, all nuclear apologists. Every freaking one of them. Every one of them. And no one goes to battle against money Dana. No one mentions it. Only Dana. No one brings it up. Only Dana. Everybody stands by him, keeps fucking going back there. Except for Dana. It's like I can't trust anybody out there in the media. Period. Nobody will stand their fucking ground. Everybody's like, I don't want to talk about it. It's too scary. You think this is scary? If you fucking ignore it for another couple of years, you got any idea how scary this is going to be? Right now, we're missing all the species. All the whales are dying throughout the coastline, emaciated. <sighs> Let's keep going. Not yelling at anybody. I'm yelling at the people that tricked them, and deceived them, and fooled them, and coerced them into thinking that they were normal. That they had an ounce of fucking morals left into them. Well, I'm swearing, might as well have a cigarette. My cigarettes don't got 7,000 chemicals. But all your friends does, your loved ones does, and that's why they can't quit it. And you despise them, you, you ridicule them, you humiliate them, and they don't even understand that, that they're addicted to 7,000 chemicals. No, I can't trust any smoke a cigarette. How many times have you seen that comment, even though I explained this? Right, so it's just a smear. It's just an attack. It's an ad hominem. They're sitting there like vultures waiting for you to do something or say something so they can snip it out. What kind of fucking person does that? They ignore everything I show, everything I do, everything I talk about. They ignore it. They ignore it. Ridicule. Not even ridicule it. These models are models from major institutions right after the accident. No, Dana. It's not real, Dana. You're making shit up. The reactors are fine, Dana. It's contained inside the reactor, Dana. You know what? Having a smoke. Don't have 7,000 chemicals. Once I swear, I might as well have a smoke. All right, so. Here's how I go. <laughs> so that model is only based upon iodine 131. There's 10 times more 132 not in that model. There's 10 times. 30 times more iodine 133, not in that model. There's 31 times more iodine 129 with a 15 million year half-life that has what is made in the chain reaction itself. It's not natural radi it's not a natural iodine that got an extra electron. It's fucking uranium converted to iodine 129. It's all isotopes. Real bad stuff. But the reactors run on uranium plutonium. Okay. Here's another model. These are real models just after the accident. This, these models are only based upon a couple of releases from a single reactor for just a couple of days. Or a week, maybe. These reactors didn't stop. Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. Yeah? Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. Chernobyl, 10 days. That's why they got a sarcophagus over it. Fukushima, never stop. That's why they throw in the homeless, the destitute, the victims of society, the people who don't speak the language, the immigrants. That's why you don't see Woods Hall or Uvic or Stanford or Oxford or MIT 
actually in the building itself. They're really good with the 3D and the green screen, trust me. If you see a video or a picture of any of these with all the suits on, they're not at Fukushima. They're not at that site. That's a given. If you look at it, you'll understand that, why I'm saying that. Hi, everybody. I'm getting sidetracked. Keep going, Dana. Certainly, it's not sidetracked to say hello to everybody, is it? You did a crime now, Dana. You're not allowed to say hi to people, Dana. Hi, Candace, Sylvia. Albert, Mickey. Yeah, I hear you, Mickey. Mickey wishes he could do an hour and a half cast. Hi, Amters. Elaine is out there sitting back, trying to have a normal day. Hi, Elaine. And hi, everybody out there. James Lee. Ice cream. David. Divine. Just cruising. And see Sylvia, anybody I didn't see hi to? Lori. I think I got. I got 46 chatters in the comment section. Hi, everybody. Woo! <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, so let's keep going. Just come in and say hi once in a while. We had such a hard time getting back up online after they destroyed all of our equipment again. That's nine times. And now, you know, we got a dead Pacific Ocean. The, the model you see behind me, let's boot that one more time. That model is Noah's model. It's based up on 40 days dispersal from a couple of days releases. It's based up on iodine-131, not all the other elements. Not the 2,000 other elements. And cesium-137. That's your favorite ones to talk about. Cesium-137, but there's 100 times more strontium-90. Who knows what the ratio is to strontium blah, 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 blah. Strontium has many daughters on top of that. Free Dana with dollars. You can donate at paypal.com. Type in Dana Durham for that hotmail.com. And so my video yesterday didn't come out. So let me plug my talk show. Now I'm recording the stream today at the same time as I'm playing it. At the same time as I'm streaming it out. Okay. And so, yesterday was screwed up. I didn't do it, but I would have posted the whole show. It was a good show yesterday. We and it showed up finally streaming, but it didn't show up. It didn't render. It was a really good show yesterday. Live Skype interviews that look and sound great. This is four thousand nine hundred ninety-five Canadian, and I'm trying to raise money to do this. And we need this right away so we can start interviewing people. This is the uh, one box solution. It's 5,000 delivered to Powell River, where I'm to in British Columbia, Canada. And this is what I need. And so everything I can get out of this, I can do all these interviews, but I also got the copyright to it. And so now I can use these, I can get all these people to, for interviews, and trust me, I'll get them. And what it does is it enhances their audio and their color, it corrects it, it corrects the frame rates, and it processes it like Adobe. And so you can donate at the nuclearproctologist.org. It's called Talk Show. If you want to get one for yourself, that's probably a good investment for $5,000 Canadian. That's delivery to my spot. It's just a little price off it right now, and that's why it's at that price. But let me come back. And so I need to raise money so I can bring in interviews and very high quality interviews. And so just the audio on this, I can use the full bandwidth, right, for audio. So whatever bandwidth I got coming in, I can use that to bring in extraordinarily rich audios on top of that. So pretty amazing, but vital to what we're going to achieve. And ultimately, um, that will be the backbone of, what, of how we push forward, no doubt. Because it allows us to... Take the architecture that's at Skype and a company that worked with them to uh, prioritize the ones and zeros. And what it means on for all of us is that we can bring in anybody, any breaking story. We can get them on Skype and now bring them in right alongside of me like I was playing guitar earlier and have them talking to us uh, right there, right now through Skype. 
pretty cool stuff, yeah? And uh, Dana will get it done. Dana's going to get this done. You know that. I got this for her. I got every, I got the kinks in it. She wouldn't believe how hard I've worked. You can't even wrap your mind around. Since the second court appearance, how hard I've worked at the software and equipment to get a narrative, be able to bring out a narrative and, and a whole new, a fresh uh, feel and a fresh approach and a more um, lucid, yeah, so we're really going to stick it to these people. we got four minutes left before the stream ends. And so I'm just chatting and finish off. My cigarette without the 7,000 chemicals. And not that anybody cares who knows me. But I like doing that just to stick it to the crazies that are everywhere on this planet. Okay, let me get back into business here. So the models that you were looking at, think about how Japan uh, sent over fire balloons. Yeah? And think about how those fire balloons were found in Alaska, Washington, Oregon, California, Arizona, Idaho, not that it matters, in Idaho, no offense to people in Idaho, that's a joke, personal joke, Montana, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, Texas, Kansas, Nebraska, South Dakota, North Dakota, Michigan, Iowa, and Mexico, and Canada. But the radiation can't do that, Dina, you... Creepy little conspiracy theorist, you. What if Canada... Dun, 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 what if Canada went out there and they did? And what if Canada went out there and found all kinds of it and they did? The study focuses on the arrival of the plume. The plume over southwest BC. Oh, really? Right, look at Vancouver Island. Yeah? No, Dana, nothing showed up, Dana. Oh, but what about Health Canada's modeling? Right, right till the judge sees that one. <laughs> They're done, man. They haven't got a leg to stand on. I got so much material on Fallout that the people who are accusing me says none of this is real. They're calling the government lawyers left, right, and center the whole time, aren't they? With all the data I got is from the governments. Yeah? So they're calling all the governments lawyer, only uh, Woods Hole and you, Vicar, right. Everybody else is wrong. You know, conspiracy whack jobs. And... This is France's modeling, ISN, but they're only including cesium and iodine. But look at how fast this thing came in and smashed into North America. No, Dana, there's none here. Do you think those monsters that are dragging me through the system, by the time we show them all of this stuff, let's move it up to day. What day is that? That's on um, the 26th. you got to hit play, Dana, for that to play. So the, 20, uh, the 3rd, the 20. 29th to 30th, 31st of March, April the 1st, April the 2nd, April the 3rd, April the 4th. So it didn't take long for just a couple of days releases. See, they didn't include, right? They didn't include, I'll get it. They didn't include anything from this reactor. Or the constant, endless, perpetual motion machine that it is. You gotta realize this detonated. They didn't include any of that. They didn't include this creature either. Right? And they, most of the models are based upon that for a couple of days. Or that for a couple of days. None of the models are based upon that. Not even for a couple of days. And none of the models are based on that. Right? So James Colbert is not going to come out and tell you that. He's not going to show you those models. He's not going to show you the context. He's not going to. He's not going to walk you through any of that. You know why? Because he's not who you think he is. Trust me. He's not the good guy. He's he's slick. That's who that fella is, Mister Slick himself. Rain with twenty million particles of radioactive iodine per liter. Per liter. I know we're at the end of the show. Hang on. Serious questions about why Canadian government failed to alert public about radioactive rain after Fukushima. Right? We'll, we'll bring him into court if we got to. We'll subpoena him in the court. We'll subpoena in that, that politician, that media, the whole nine yards, if that's what it takes to beat these guys. It won't, though. The judge will look at this and, and call these guys idiots. My cigarettes don't have 7,000 chemical goals. Radioactive rain caused 130 schools, but yet the rain in California had 10 times more. So do your multiplication. 10 times 130. 10 times 130, I'm sorry, 
The radioactive Dana. I was looking at the wrong number. Sue me. Calgary <laughs> Sun, no need to panic. It's pretty <laughs> windy. It's okay, Zoe. It's windy. <laughs> so the rain. Okay, Zoe. Hang on, buddy. You're okay. The rain caused 29 million backwards. Do you know what the kids were breeding that morning on the way to school? Do you know what's going to happen? What the studies from Dr. Raymond Gilmady and everybody else showed will happen in four, five, six, seven years after? Well, it's happening. Okay, that's the show. We'll come in and say hi to everybody and say goodnight to everybody. I'll just do that myself or not. I'll come over. Well, can bring you up. Why not? Hey, it's that easy. Good night, everybody. Or I shouldn't say good night. Good day, everybody. It's 11.30 a.m. here. And remember, the streams are... The streams are... Um, seven days a week at livestream.com. Just type in Dana Durnford. You'll see that picture showing up, okay? Hi, everybody. I'll bring that back up for you. Hi, everybody. Amters, good day, everybody. Free Dana. Lori, Mickey. Hugs, everybody. Amters, Divine. Albert, just uh, cruising. Mickey Smith. Candace. Bob. Sylvia, ice cream, you scream. David. Amthurst, and everybody else is out there, sat around, shaking their heads, saying, Dana, you, you got another stream out there. Don't know how you done it. Well, don't feel alone. I'm with you all the way. <laughs> I got no concept of how I managed to pull it off. It's been a tough, a long, tough haul. And I've had, proud to say, I got the best people on the planet alongside of me the whole time. And that we'll walk this path together. Hugs, folks. Take care, everybody.